today, my guest is going to share with you how he was able to generate over $1.2 million as a freight broker in his first year without cold calling. So I'm going to bring up my guest really quick here. Boom. So this is Mike Burke. Mike is a friend of mine, past student. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me, Dennis. Yeah, Mike's been on the podcast or on the on the live before, I should say. Uh, we talked about kind of his early startup success, some of the things he did. You guys could check that out in a previous interview. I think it's hosted on YouTube, or maybe you might be able to get it on a Facebook uh, on the Facebook page. But ultimately, yeah, mainly on YouTube. Mainly on YouTube. But yeah, yeah he uh, he's been he's done extremely well. He had kind of a rocky beginning and a slow start, but since then he's really he's really uh, nailed it. And again, like I said, he's done over one point two million dollars in the last year without cold calling. So that's why we're here today. Mike, give us a just give us a super quick intro. You know, explain. You know, broker where you're at. Just kind of set the plate, and then we'll dive into the training. Okay. Uh, well, I started uh, my broker in the beginning of 2021. I opened up my doors on January 1st, and between January 1st and end of April, business was nothing. Um, but, you know, I didn't give up. I kept pounding the, you know, the emails out and hitting LinkedIn, trying to get connections. Finally, end of April, I got my first customer and started moving loads. Then the third customer came along and the fourth. Um, so by the end of the year, I wound up doing just almost 500,000 for the year. Well, why don't we dive into, you know, the thing that I remember uh, again, is this is over a year ago was when you purchased my no cold calling course and my no cold calling course uh, is a program that's designed around exactly what it sounds like. People that are shy about cold calling and don't have the, or maybe don't have the time to make hundreds of cold calls a day. And they were looking for another channel or strategy to generate clients. And so that's where we focus in on LinkedIn and social selling. You purchased that course and, you know, like anything else, great information is only as good as you put it to work, right? So many people right. purchased that course and didn't take action on it or had a little bit of rejection and didn't continue on. But from what I can tell, uh, based on our conversation, it sounds like you really ramped it up and you really leveraged that as your primary source for getting clients. Yeah, because I hate the phone. I will not pick up a phone and call somebody cold. Um, I'm not saying I don't pick up the phone and call people because I do usually, you know, it's a warm call because yeah. they somehow they've seen my name and know my name and when I call them. Yeah. Perfect. So, All right. So why don't we do this? Let's share the basic fundamentals of the process that you've been using. And, and again, guys, this is not rocket science. Okay. This is no, not, not, this is not rocket science. This is this is very simple, but it's proven to be effective if you do it the right way. Okay. So let's hear your version on how you've been able to leverage it, Mike. Talk to us kind of how you start, um, start this whole process, get this flywheel going with finding and starting to have, you know, conversations with shippers right. in your niche. Uh, when I first started out, I was just using LinkedIn's basic messenger and Sending, you know, finding shipping managers, um, logistic managers, and sending them a quick little hello, introducing myself. And basically, my opening email is, I would like to connect with you. Having a professional like you in my network will be a plus to me. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, and you're sending a LinkedIn message, not an email, right? Yeah, LinkedIn yeah, message. So it's a LinkedIn message. Yep. Okay. Yep. Basic, simple. Quick you intro, know? right? Quick intro, yep. custom so connection they, request. So if they answer that, then I have another one where, you know, I thank them for, you know, accepting my um, message and my connection. And, you know, we go from there. And if they answer my second email with the third, that's when I pick up and I try to find a way to find their email, either ask them or use some of the tools that are out there, like um, Lucia. Um, that's, you know, big one for LinkedIn. Um, I also use rocket reach, um, to get emails. Mm -hmm. Those are my two, those are my two main sources to get emails. I mean, there's a whole bunch of systems out there that you can use to find somebody's email. Just so you guys uh, know, Lucia is a plugin for a Chrome browser. 
and it's a plugin that you can use that when you're on a LinkedIn profile, it will actually give you some additional information, including maybe phone numbers and emails and contact information specific to that person if it's not already on their profile. So let me just summarize what you said from the beginning. You searched for people on LinkedIn that were in your niche, shipping managers, warehouse managers, you know, logistics managers. Mm -hmm. You sent a simple connection request, but it was a custom connection request, just something warm and friendly, but not salesy. And then from there, if they accepted your connection request, you sent them a thank you message, uh, thanking them for the connection. And then from there, you're looking for, you're using tools or you're using their profile or different tools to find their email, correct? Correct. And then from there, all right, so now that we've found their email, do you stay inside of LinkedIn and messaging them or are you pivoting over into email? How does that work? I pivot over to email then. Um, okay. All right. So talk about it from them, there. You know, I send them an email now more salesy, um, mm -hmm. you know, basically giving them the fine points of my company, Teddy's Logistics, and, you know, trying to get them to understand, you know, what I can bring to their table for them yeah. in, the, in the email. Mm -hmm. And then I use like, I use a mass email system. Um, basically I use Gmail. So I use a, a program called Gmail where you can send out a mass of emails at one time. And usually I send out about 10 to 15 at a time, just so I don't get overwhelmed. And you look and you see who's opened your emails you see whose emails got blocked or whose emails don't exist at all. So the ones that get open are the ones I call first <clears throat> and, you know, try to get in and talk, talk to them. A lot of times, you know, you still have to get past the gatekeeper um, who some of them can be really nice and some of them are tough. Right. Um, but you get your ways like, and the one thing I never, ever do, and I keep telling my agents never, never to do that have worked for me or are currently working for me is when you call the gatekeeper, don't ever, ever say you're a broker. Don't ever say the name of your company. Just say, I'd like to speak to the shipping manager. I have a question about a load. And 98% of the time, they'll either give you their phone number, put you through to them or give you their email again. Um, and basically it's like, well, I, I have their email, but you know, this is something I need to speak to them. So can you like put me through to their voicemail so I can leave a voicemail and then you leave a nice voicemail, you know, asking them to call you back because you got questions about a shipment. And 95% of the time I get callbacks when I say that. Yeah. And so here's the thing guys. What, what you have to understand, this is a very simple process, but if you break this down into the basic fundamentals, what, what Mike is doing is he's approaching them in a non-salesy format via LinkedIn, and he's warming them up. He's creating some awareness. He's starting to build that know, like, and trust that you need in order to start doing business with people. Because again, first they got to know who you are. And that's, he started that with LinkedIn. Right. And then, you know, he emailed them. And so there's another touch point. And then he's using the phone to do outreach. So he's using a multi channel outreach approach where he's using LinkedIn, email, and phone. But he doesn't use the phone in this situation for Mike. He doesn't use the phone until he's already made multiple touch points and they know who he is because they've already seen his name. Fact is, if they accepted his connection request on LinkedIn, they've already looked at his profile because nobody accepts a connection request from a stranger unless they've already looked at their profile, right? So they already know what he does. He doesn't have to go out there and start talking about and puking on them about his business or about what he can do when it's cold. He waits till it's a little bit warmed up he warms these leads up using that multi touch point, you know, approach. And then from there, he just, you know, starts continuing to develop that relationship and sharing the value that he can provide. It can literally be that simple, right? People like to overcomplicate stuff. Um, what I love about what you're doing, Mike, is the simplicity of it. And number two, the system, the way you've kind of systematized it in such a way that it would allow you to teach this to anybody. The main, main thing. Like Dennis said, though, is your profile. You know, they do look at your profile, and you do need to have a very professional-looking profile. And 
in your profile have how you can help their companies and what you do. Um, otherwise, yeah, so you, you know, yeah, because if you don't have a good profile, they're not they're not going to connect with you, and you know you're not going to be able to move on with them. That's right. You have to fully optimize your LinkedIn profile, and the optimization is not for sales. It's not for conversion. It's to make a good impression and to build trust. You want somebody to look at that profile and say, wow, this guy or gal is legit. They sound completely professional and I, and I would be happy to connect with them. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to do business with them. It just means that I'm going to connect with them. And if they connect with you, now all of a sudden they've allowed you into their world. And that's when, you, that's when that first checkbox of the no, like, and trust gets checked off. They know who you are. Now you got to go like, and then you got to build trust, right? In order for them to do business with you. And I think this is a perfect time, Mike, because I just want to share this. I said, everybody, there was going to be a special announcement here. And if you guys like the idea of this no cold calling system that Mike is sharing with you, the good news is I'm actually including the no cold calling program, $1,500 value in my freight broker sales accelerator program. You guys have probably heard about you know, that, that free broker sales accelerator program is where I take that piece of my brain, everything about sales, selling the freight broker sales process, technology, how to leverage all that and predictably get clients. As a matter of fact, Mike was a part of that program. In addition to the no cold calling, he was also a part of the freight broker sales accelerator program. So anything else you want to add or where do you go from there? I mean, at that point, it's really focused more on continued email and phone follow-up. Is that correct? Um, yeah. I mean, just like anything, I mean, once you you know your client and they want to do business with you, I mean, you're constantly in contact with them, um, and you have to be. I mean, you can't just like, okay, they're giving me loads and never talk to them again because that won't work. Yeah. You, I, daily, I, I'm talking to my customers on a daily basis, um, except for the ones that you know give you a load once a month or, you know, once every other month. Um, I have about 30 of those kind of customers and, you know, I'll email them once a month, you know, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? But the ones that are giving me loads daily, I mean, email them every day. Yeah. You really and, need, after you do get the clients, you really do need to stay top of mind because these people are busy, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, they're managing, you know, you got to understand they're managing a lot more freight and a lot more things than just what they're giving to you. They might be managing hundreds or even thousands of loads a week or month. And so, you know, if you're not top of mind, then you're probably going to eventually you're going to kind of fall between the cracks, right? Especially if you're, if you're not one of their major providers, if you're one of their major providers and you're handling 30 or 40 or 50% of their freight load, that's a little bit different. They're not going to forget about you. But if you're just doing a couple loads a week or a few loads a month, you're definitely going to fall through the cracks, right? I like that whole concept of using email, but I do also think the, it's really, really important that you have an actual dialogue with them on the phone. The, the thing that I really did was in addition to being on the phone, when possible, I would try to go out and visit them. Now, I know that's not always possible, right? You know, you're in Florida, if your customer's in Washington or in Canada or someplace yeah. distant, you know, sometimes yeah. it's hard to travel out there, but you would be shocked how valuable it can be and the difference in the type of relationship you have when you are actually able to sit down with them face to face. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to add about that process of taking it from finding them on LinkedIn to starting to engage them on LinkedIn and then converting over to email and then converting over to the phone. Anything you want to talk about in that process? Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Um, actually, just uh, want to talk about people who to contact. I mean, everybody is going after like logistics managers, warehouse managers, and shipper managers, transport managers. I focus on higher ups. I go after like, you know, director of logistics or transportation or shipping. Um, I also go after plant warehouse managers, plant managers, um, director of operations, operation managers, um, anybody that deals with the warehouse is who I target. Yep. Um, now, why Sometimes, do you do that? Explain to me why you do that and why you made that distinction. What was the, what, what was the benefit Versus, you know, decision makers. Yeah. Decision makers. You know, your shipping manager, 
you do have to get a report with your shipping manager because I, I got burned one time, you know, I spent three weeks, you know, whining and dining, email and going back and forth. It was director of operations. He loved me. You know, we signed everything. We went through all kinds of paperwork. I had to upgrade my insurance to meet their insurance. And I didn't bother reaching out to the shipping managers of the company. And when he, you know, sent out an email, you know, he CC'd me on it to his shipping managers. You know, we're going to start using uh, Teddy's logistics and blah, blah, blah. Not a single shipping manager ever got back to me. So what did that, what did that tell you? That told me you need to build relationship with the lower ranks and the upper ranks. That's right. Um, you know, just that's where you got to you focus your attention. Yeah. What you have to understand and, is that when, when a, in a corporation, in a business, very, very, very rarely is in this day and age, is there one person that makes the final decision? Okay. It's very rare that that's the case unless it's the CEO. And in a lot of cases, they don't even make the exclusive decision without having the input of their circle of influence. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, I like what Mike is saying, and that is, you know, when you're going after a prospect, you know, you might not just wine and dine or reach out and try to connect with just one person, right? Yes, you should reach out and develop a relationship with the shipping manager. Yes, you should develop a really try to develop a relationship with their boss. And you might even want to try to develop a relationship with their boss. Because now you have a much, number one, you have a much larger opportunity and a better opportunity that you're going to start a dialogue with that shipper. Mm -hmm. And number two, you know, when you have multiple people in that organization that know who you are and you can reference each other, it only helps to build that know, like, and trust that's required in order to start doing business with you. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I love that. I, you know, I find that, you know, a lot of people, you definitely don't have to go after the CEO level or the VP level in this case. Those I guys do. are, those are, you don't have to, those guys, those guys are yeah. sometimes going to be a little more, more challenging to get in touch with because they're probably going to have a little bit better filtering process. Mm -hmm. But I do like uh, the concept of swimming up the swimming upstream a little bit and, and trying to leverage people who have a little bit more influence mm -hmm. in the organization. So I do like that. Yeah. I mean, in smaller companies, because that's another thing I also focus on too is smaller companies. Um, yep. Anybody with between zero and 500 employees, sometimes a thousand. Um, and I do, I, I focus my LinkedIn on everybody, CEOs, the COO, you know, anybody that has input into their logistics. So the when company. you say zero to 500, you mean employees, right? They have less, yeah. than, less than 500 employees. Yeah. Yeah. Those are typically going to be classified as small to medium sized businesses. Yeah. Whether, whether, whether it sounds a little weird, a company that has 500 employees is actually classified as a small business, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone who has someone who has 5,000 or 10,000 employees, that's much, a much larger business. Right. right. So, yeah. So I, I like that. I really like that filtering process. I really like that system. I think it makes a ton of sense. And not only that, I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge, proponent of LinkedIn and social selling and you're using it. You've literally used it to build your business. You let off this call with saying you hate cold calling. You won't make a cold call. You'll only the worst case scenario, you're going to make a warm call. And that warming up process is what you described today. And uh, I mean, to me, it's no wonder that you've seen great success. Obviously you're providing great service on the back end. Otherwise people wouldn't continue to do business with you after that first load or two. So listen, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Um, no, I mean, it's just like Dennis said, it's a very simple process. Um, does it get time consuming sometimes? Yes, it does. But, you know, you have to invest the time to get a return. And I mean, that's basically it. I mean, that's all I yeah. do. Yeah, that's perfect. I love it. It's simple, it's duplicatable, and it's something that's working for you. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you're going to continue to do that. And for those of you that are interested in, in actually having the no cold calling course that Mike took, as well as the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator that Mike was a part of, um, what he's doing, some of the things he's doing are the fundamentals of those programs. Mike, I want to thank you so much. Congratulations on all your success. $1.2 million without making any cold calls. That's quite the accomplishment. Um, thank you for thank being you. here. 
uh, you know, anytime continued yeah. success, continued success. We'll bring you back on here from time to time. Maybe when you hit, start hitting 5 million, we'll, we'll bring you back on here again. And, yeah, uh, open, uh, by the end of next year. Love it. Love it. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. And so you've been adding some agents, so that's great. And listen, yeah. if you're, if you're looking for agents, why don't you let people know how they can connect with you? If they, if, if they want to become an agent, maybe that's something they could reach out to you on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn or through Facebook. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's Mike the, Burke, yeah. B-U-R-K-E, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So look, yep. check them out. Check them out on uh, LinkedIn. I'm sure that in the in the comments here down below in the live, he can, he'll probably, yep. he can probably throw his email down in there and you guys can connect with him. Thank you so much for being here. Congrats on all yep. your success. Listen, if you're just getting started and you're not, you know, you're, you're just in the early stages of getting started and need some startup training, right? Specific to becoming a freight broker, freight agent, you can check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students, been in business over a decade, and we have a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee on that program. So feel free mm -hmm. to check that out.